All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Math Lesson 21. Today, we're talking about word problems about equal groups. So get ready to break out your multiplication algebraic algorithms. Let's see what we got going on. So just a reminder, the way to set up any type of multiplication story problem. They want you to visualize the number of groups times the number in each group. And that's always going to give you the total, right? And I went ahead and made you a little picture here. So when we're talking about the number of groups, like three different boxes, right? And we have four baseballs in each box. So if you were going to have to go and write this out, the number of groups, well, I have three boxes. Those are my groups, right? Times the number in each group. I have four in each group because I have four baseballs in each box. And that's going to give me the total number of the baseballs, which would be 12. So not too tough. As always, the toughest part is reading each sentence and keeping the picture in your mind, right? So we got a lot to keep track of now with these story problems. Ultimately, I would like you to be able to read them and just be able to know, but if you're really struggling, here's a little helpful hint. Problems that come at us from Lesson 11, those were combining story problems, adding you got to think some plus some more, and sometimes even plus some more equals the total. Remember what we talked about in Lesson 16, separating story problems. Those were subtracting, and the way they want you to visualize those is some that you start with minus some that went away equals what's left. And... Today, combining story problems, multiplication, number of groups times the number in each group is going to give us the total. A lot to keep track of now. We're 21 lessons deep. You're going to have to get used to turning back in your book. So let's jump right into this right now. 25 books are stacked into piles with five books in each pile. And they want us to figure out how many piles are there. 25 books stacked into piles with five books in each pile. How many piles are there? So let's get our variable in place right now. How many piles are there? Are they talking about the number of groups, the number in each group, or the total? I would say how many piles. The pile works just like a box, right? So I think they're looking for the number of groups. Here's the good news. Remember what we said about the commutative property of multiplication? If you mix up your number of groups and the number in each group, it's not going to really mess up your answer. It's imperative you get the total in the right place, though, right? So let's go and figure this out. 25 books. Are they talking about the number of books in each group? Or are they talking about the total number of books? I'm hoping you caught it. 25 is the total number. Five books in each pile. That's the number in each group, right? So we have it set up in equation form. Let's go ahead and run our algebraic algorithm. So I have to go ahead and isolate my variable, don't I? I want to get my variable P all to himself. So I'm going to go in circle times five, kick it over to the other side, right? Let's go ahead and rewrite everything that's not circled. P equals 25. Here's the good news. Multiplication equations, we don't care if the first term is the variable or the second term. 
let's just go ahead and use our inverse operation change multiplication into divide and you end up with p equals 25 divided by 5 right we have some terms to combine for when it's time when it's time i'm going to drop down my combined term answer but i read equations left to right so the first thing i come across is p the next thing i come across is the equal sign now I can drop down my combined term answer. P is equal to five piles, right? Not too tough so far. These equations are getting easier every day, Mr. Hines. Check out this one. 49 zebras are separated into seven equal herds. Here's what they want us to find. How many zebras would be in each herd. So 49 zebras are separated into seven equal herds. How many zebras would be in each herd? Where's my variable going? How many zebras in a herd? That sounds like the number in, in each group. Pick a letter. Maybe you'll want Z for zebra. 49 zebras, if we get a picture in our mind, that sounds like they're talking about the total number of zebras in this story, right? And lastly, seven equal herds. A herd is like the box with the baseballs in it. So I have seven for my number of groups. Okay, what am I going to do first? Combine terms or isolate a variable? I'm hoping we realize we got to go ahead and isolate the variable, get Z by himself. So I'm kicking time seven over to the other side. I'll go ahead and rewrite Z equals 49. And I just have to go and use my inverse operation. I don't worry in multiplication if my first term is a variable or the second term, right? That's only with subtraction we have that worry. I have some terms to combine now. Two numbers on the same side of an equal sign. I better go ahead and combine them. Drop my combined term ans answer when it's time, but it's not time yet. I got some stuff to write. I ran across Z, so I'll write it. I ran across equal sign, so I'm just going to write it. Let's drop down our combined term answer. Z is equal to 7. There are four rows of desks with four desks in each row. Our mission this time is to find out how many total desks are in the room. I'm hoping my guys are sharp enough to catch the key word here, right? Big giveaway, total desks. So let's put a variable. I'm going to use D for desks under total. Four rows with four desks in each row. It really doesn't matter where you put it because it's four and four, right? And lastly, one of those that's so easy, it's hard. I actually have to start off with combining terms, don't I? Because I have four times four on the same side of the equal sign. I read left to right. So I came across four times four. That's 16. Now I have the equal sign and the D. There are 16 desks total. Here's an interesting one. Write an equal groups word problem. And I assure you, when it shows up in your book, it is not going to be highlighted in red, will it? We have people who, for whatever reason, can't read the word word problem. You got to make sure to read all your directions carefully. So. You just got to come up with a story. Five friends and I each had 
75 cents. How much money do we have all together? And catch this last bit, then answer the problem in your equation. So let's go ahead and answer it. How much money would we have? We have $4.50 between us, right? Not too tough. The toughest part about this is just reading the fact that they want you to set it up as a word problem. One of the few times a math answer is subjective. Check out this one. Below is an equal groups word problem. Find the answer to the question. And here's something new. Then, Use the answer to rewrite the last sentence as a statement, a declarative sentence that ends in a period instead of a question, instead of an interrogative sentence that ends in a question mark. So the books arrived in five boxes. There were 12 boxes in each book. Well, that sounds like the old number of groups times the number in each group, right? So number of groups was five. The number in each group was 12. Can you do this one in your brain? What's 12 times five? Hey, that's gotta be 60, I'm hoping some of you say. So how many books were in all five boxes? We have to write it as a declarative sentence. There were 60 books total, or 60 books in all five boxes, or 60 books in all. 60 books altogether. Again, it's fairly subjective, right? The important part is you turn it into a declarative sentence and you use words. Something new on the last problem of this lesson, and I'll let you know right now, you might get overwhelmed and say, ah, I'm just going to leave this one alone, Mr. Hines. What's one problem? This problem is worth five, which is halfway to be in a redo. You do not want to leave this problem blank. There is a lot to do to it, and it's worth five problems. So they're going to give you a chart and they're going to give you a name of some stuff and the location and the area in square miles. So I changed it into lakes in the area, right? I'm going to be talking about Lake Mitagoshi and Lake Upsilon and Long Lake and Icelandic Lake. And I just kind of made up some areas to help show you how to do this style of problem. Let's take a look at the first question right now. Which lake has the greatest area? Well, let's look over here on the area column. Which lake was the greatest area? So they're asking about the name. They don't want the number. The question is saying, which lake has the greatest area? So let's go ahead and answer it. Metagoshi. Whoa. Let's go ahead and answer, shall we? Metagoshi. Let's take a look at the next part. Which lake has the least amount of area? Well, that would be Epsilon, right? Now it's saying what is the sum of the greatest and the least? Hopefully you remember sum means the answer when you add. So I'm going to go back to Metagoshi, and I'm going to realize that it has 10 square miles. I'm going to look at Upsilon. That has 2 square miles. And I'm going to reiterate that sum is the answer when you add, right? What's 10 plus 2? Welcome back to first grade. Hey, that's 12 square miles. And let's go ahead and label it. 12 square and miles. 
Actually, I just want to do this to show you how nice my pen works on my new computer, right? 12 square miles. Not too tough, but that's not all we have. Check out this one. The difference of which two lakes is seven square miles. So something minus something is going to give you seven. What numbers can I use here? What minus what is going to give you seven? Well, looks to me like the only choice I have would be 10 minus three is going to give me seven, right? But that's not the answer. The difference of which two lakes? Well, the one with 10 square miles, hey, that was Metagoshi again, right? So that's actually what they want for the answer. Which one had the three square miles? That one was Long Lake. That's what we're actually looking for in the answer. And we are still not done yet. Check out this one. The sum of the area of which two lakes is equal to the area of Icelandic. So something, I should know a sum means the answer when you add. Something plus something is going to be equal to the area of Icelandic. Now we have to go ahead and think. What plus what is equal to 5? Well, looks to me like 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. Not too tough, but that's not how they want it answered. The sum of the area of which two lakes? So again, you're going to have to name lakes. Epsilon and long. So again, five points all rolled into one question. We're going to be getting more and more of those as the book progresses. This is the first big one. Again, I will reiterate, you do not want to just skip over this one. All right, I believe that is all we have for today. As always, you're going to want a piece of scratch paper and a pencil on your Socrative quiz, and good luck.